Hi, I'm Tree. For those of you who are, for some reason, watching this and don't normally watch my videos, normally it's Project Transparency. But today, because my friend Mariah asked for a drop spindle demonstration, we're having stand and stir arting. Or it's more like perch and stir arting today because drop spindle. Although you can't stand and do this. I just am not. So, first things first. This is what I sent you, Mariah. It is a handmade, sorry about that, top whirl drop spindle. You have your hook, your weight, your spindle bit, and your leader. And I'm strange. I like wool yarn for my leader just because it's a little bit more grabby. I also am very particular about how it goes on there because I'm strange. I also sent you a big ball of this stuff. This is East Frisian, and yes, it is a type of sheep's. The nice thing about it, and while <laughs> why you're supposed to learn with something like this, instead of the things I learned on, is because East Frisian will felt if you look at it cross-eyed. It's just the way that the wool works. It has to do with the, the little hooks that are on the fleece. So they'll grab everything and grab each other. I also sent you some of this, but it was braided. And this is BFL, which is Blue Face Leicester. Le Lester. Blue Face Lester. I can say it. This is like the next grabby you can get, and it's pretty standard roving type. I have a couple friends with dyeing businesses, so I get my stuff from them. But, like, the BFL comes in a big braid of roving like this. This isn't even all of it that comes in a braid. I use it when I'm teaching my drop spindle classes as kind of a, a leader into the different kinds of fleeces you can spin with because it's a li little bit harder than the East Frisian. There's also art bats, which can be anywhere from, like, four to 14 different types of fleece, including things like milk fiber and bamboo. Carbonized bamboo is like one of the best things ever. Angelina, which looks like tinsel. All the things. You can do this with nylon, you can do it with cotton, but we're starting with BFL because easy. Especially when you're somebody like me who started with the drop spindle with art bats and then did super wash, which is basically like, BFL, but it's been treated with an enzyme so that there are no hooky things on it. So yes, I learned with two of the most difficult types to do because I am special and taught myself. Mostly. More or less. It's like I got the basic 15 minute instruction and that was it. <laughs> this is the thing about drop spindle spinning. Is that it takes 10-15 minutes to learn and your entire life to perfect. You're always getting better and you're always finding new, strange, different ways to do the thing. And if you're like me, you like to experiment with strange things. Like, I started spinning with polyfill at one point because I wanted to see how that worked. And using tool as a plier. It happens. I'm strange. You know this, Mariah. So on to the spinning. So weird perspective is going to be weird because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing and my face is kind of unimportant in this. Also, I apologize for the state of my studio. I am currently preparing for a show Friday and it's a wreck. Okay, legitimately it's always a wreck, but it's even more of a wreck today. And this is going to be weird because I have multiple spindles going in order to show you different things. So, first things first, you're going to take some of your East Frisian and pull it out a little bit, thin it, and it's going to take a while to be comfortable with it, but it's going to look like there isn't a whole lot there. And you're going to take your drop spindle and your leader, and you're going to hook it over your hook. And in the loop that's there, you're going to... kind of loop over your roving. Got it? And a weird thing that happens when you spin is that you have a tendency to pick up baskets because you need some place to dump everything while you're working. But basically, you want to spin your thing, 
you want to spin your spindle a little bit to get a little bit of a twist going in the leader. And then you just spin it off your leg and let it fall and let it drop. And it's going to be uneven at first, especially if you're new. And you just keep feeding it out. Now the trick is to, <laughs> there are several tricks, but part of the trick is to put it evenly on your drop spindle. See how I'm evenly rolling it up on there? Because if you don't, it'll misweight your spindle and it'll make it harder for you to do the thing. And once you've got it to a place where you're happy with, you rehook it and repeat. And sometimes you get really good spins and sometimes you get really bad spins. That was an example of a really bad spin. And like everything, it requires practice and somewhere around like hour 30 when you're doing this, you will get to the point where you're just feeding as you go. At first it's going to be a lot of not very coordinated motions. You're going to probably end up doing the thing where you get it all set up for yourself and then do it. But after a while, it'll just become easy. And you'll trust that the fiber won't break and that you won't drop your spindle. Now the thing is, is that you will eventually drop your spindle. Which is part of the reason why I make them square. And should you want to tie off so you can come back to it later, you just spin it around the, wind it around the hook a couple times and let it go and it'll keep itself. Now the trick to doing the plying is to get your yarn off your drop spindle. <laughs> Basically I just rough ball it because it's going to go back into a ply. So Mariah, you do what you want. Do what makes you happy, sweet pea. And if you have any wool allergies, you will need to scrub yourself down, like I will. The thing about plying is that whatever way you spun your first ply, to ply it, you spin it the other way, which is helpful if you're ambidextrous. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a little bit more tricky. And I have my two pieces together, and I'm just going to dump my, my freshly spun ply into my basket. See, again, this is why baskets are useful. And I'm going to put it onto my leader just like I did it before. So um, I moved my basket of stuff to the other side of me because I realized it was on the wrong side for me to ply. And just like before, you give yourself a little spin in. Try not to drop it. Let it feed a little bit into your ear. I actually have it doubled up at the beginning just to make my life a little bit easier. Give it a little extra grip. And then you ply. But see how nice that looks? Isn't that cool? The nylon thread will not grab onto the East Frisian the way something like VFL might, but that's okay because the East Frisian will find a way to grab onto itself. And you can do perfect lace weight spinning on these things. I think lace weight is kind of dull, but that's me. <laughs> so you do what you do you and don't worry what other people say. But there you go. There is the beginning of apply. Now the BFL is a little trickier. So you want to the nice thing is about the thing I gave you is that you can basically pull it down in a couple ways. You can peel it like a banana or you can do like you did with the East Frisian. It's going to require a bit more tugging and a little bit more practice to get it and a, little bit, and a little bit more practice to get to where you're happy. But after that, it's the same, the same jam. You start your leader, you hook your leader onto your hook, you put your fiber through the leader, 
give yourself a little bit of a start and then go. The the easiest the easiest way to fix this is to just feed it up into your roving like that. That's it. And remember that spinning is very much a Bob Ross sort of thing. There are no mistakes, there are only happy accidents. And you are always going to find new and interesting things because you supposedly made a mistake. Whether that's a texture you really enjoy or what. So don't feel bad about making mistakes because they lead to discovery. I also sent you three pieces of pipe. Now this is basically a homemade nitty knotty, which I don't know if you know what that is. But basically, you connect the thing together so that it looks like that. And then you use it to skein your yarn. You know, that stuff you just made. This is what you use to get it off of your spindle so that you can wash and weight it. Now because I don't have any finished spinning for you, I'm just going to use some nice yarn that I have that's actually from one of my dyer friends. Okay, so basically somewhere in the middle of the main shaft, yes I said shaft, you grab a hold of it and then you just go around and around and around so that you end up with a skein. So see, like this. And when you're done doing your skeining, you take some yarn and you tie it off like here, 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 and here, and you slide it off. And there are a couple ways to do it. You can do it by taking the tees off or, you know, depending on how weighty it was or how tightly you pulled, you can just slide it off. I often have to remove a tee because I got tight. I got hands that do grabby things <laughs> and you'll have something like this and the nitty knotty when it's in its when it's in this configuration is a two yard if you were to if you were to just skein like around here it'd be one yard and why is yardage important so you know how much yarn you have but basically once you have it like this and it's tied up you wash it in cold water you hang it over something and you weight it down and you let it dry and that's washing and weighting it which I'm not doing today because I have nothing prepared. That is the basics of drop spindling, my dear. Give me questions so I can troubleshoot for you. Bye. The community calendar. If you would like to see me, come to Definitely De Pier on Friday. Tree and I, the zombie bunny, will be at Great Harvest Bread Company from 5 to 8. Bring your friends, their fun toys, and new buttons. Sailor Moon buttons! You want them. spending drop spending